Hey everybody, I'm JCB with The Awesomest, and you're watching The Awesomest Explains. Today we're going to be taking a look at an image that's been reappearing all over the internet since 2012. You've probably seen this before. It's an image of two Earths. The one on the left is marked 1978, the one on the right is marked 2012. The difference between the pretty bright blue Earth and the much more brown Earth is staggering at first glance. And that's usually all it takes for people to reshare this image without giving it a second thought. Before I get too far into this video, I do want to say that I think this image was made with good intentions. But even if you agree with something, it's important to verify it, otherwise you run the risk of spreading misinformation. In the past, there have been a lot of photos of the Earth that have caused a cultural stir. For instance, the pale blue dot image from the Voyager spacecraft shows Earth from so far away that it really puts our planet's place in the solar system into perspective, let alone our place in the universe. This image, accompanied with Carl Sagan's words, has spawned a whole slew of YouTube videos and has captured the imagination of millions. If you want to watch my personal favorite of these videos, there's a link in the description below. In the 1960s, the pale blue dot had not yet been photographed. Photos of the Earth had been taken before, but always seemed to feature the Earth as a large, looming object filling the frame, sometimes accompanied by our small distant moon. This perspective further reinforced our species' rather biased Earth-centric state of mind. We knew the Earth wasn't the center of the universe, the galaxy, or even our own solar system, but it still loomed large in our minds. Just circling the Earth is still considered a huge achievement. But in 1968, the crew of Apollo 8 took this picture called Earthrise as their craft orbited the moon. This photo shows the Earth as relatively small compared to the much closer surface of the moon. This was a turning point. Before this photo, no photos like it had ever been publicized. When people saw this picture on the front page of their newspapers, it changed the way we saw ourselves. It exposed the short-sightedness of our species. Maybe Earth just seemed large because we're so very, very small. Before Earthrise, the whole world was wrapped up in the drama of the Vietnam War, a bloody battle of human ego that seems so big and important. But out here, it suddenly doesn't seem so big. In fact, the Earth itself looks kind of vulnerable, a lonely, defenseless marble floating in the vast darkness of space. This is where we live, all of us. Not one corner, not one race or religion, everybody. This is our home. The Earthrise photo became a symbol for the pro-peace and environmental groups of the United States. Suddenly, as a species, we had some perspective. Not yet this much perspective, or this much perspective, but as a species, we got our first glimpse at our true standing in the cosmos, and it was humbling. It's no surprise that photos of the Earth can have a serious cultural impact in our society. They remind us of how small and fragile our planet is. So if this image influenced people to reconsider actions that might harm the environment, that's great. But there's one serious problem. This image is a hoax. I don't mean to say these images of the Earth are fake, though I'll get back to that. What I mean to say is this image is inaccurate. It's deliberately inaccurate. Every single detail is deliberately inaccurate. They say a lie can get halfway around the world before the truth gets its shoes on. And believe me, this image has been debunked numerous times, yet it keeps going like the little image that could. So in one final attempt to stop this thing in its tracks, I am going to tear this image apart piece by piece so that hopefully people will think twice before sharing it to all of their friends. In fact, feel free to share this video to anybody who posts this image believing it to be real. Before we begin, this is what the Earth looks like when photographed as a whole in near perfect weather and lighting conditions. In order to get this photo, the astronauts of Apollo 17 waited for just the right time of day, the right time of year, and the right weather conditions. All of these variables had to be just right to take this image NASA calls the blue marble. This is Earth. This is what it looks like when photographed as a whole. So now that we have a reference, let's tackle each of the claims made by this image, whether they're explicitly stated or simply implied. Claim number one. These are two images of the Earth. In a way, these are in fact two pictures of the Earth, the same way a collage of students could be considered a photo of your graduating class. You see, while NASA has cameras that can take highly detailed images of the Earth, none of them are currently the right distance away to capture the entire Earth in one image. So instead of one complete picture, they take thousands of closer images with high levels of detail and then use computer software to stitch the images together, giving an overall view of the planet. The image on the right was taken over the course of one day and used swaths of the Earth's surface to comprise the photo. In fact, the most obvious sign that this image has been stitched together is the relative size of the United States. The image on the left is more accurate. In fact, the difference in size between the United States in the photo on the left and the photo on the right is almost three times. So unless North America literally expands 
expanded over the last 40 years, I have to say this image from 2012 is at least a little inaccurate. This photo is called The Water Planet. It was taken July 10th, 2005 as part of the so-called New Blue Marble composite image. While beautiful, it shows how deceiving a composite image can be. Out of context, one could use this image in a comparison to claim the entire planet has drowned over the last 40 years. The bottom line is, these composite images, while awe-inspiring, aren't photos of the Earth the same way Earthrise or the original Blue Marble were photos of the Earth. And there's nothing wrong with that. These photos were meant to showcase the highly detailed images being captured from space, not to be used as a global selfie. Claim number two. These photos were taken in 1978 and 2012, respectively. Right off the bat, this is false. The image said to have been taken in 1978 was actually taken in 2001 and released to the public in 2002. You can verify this fact by visiting NASA's Gallery of Earth Photos where you will find the image on the left. It is entitled The Blue Marble. Or rather, the series of photos taken is referred to as the Blue Marble. The specific photo in question is called Globe West. The photo on the right was taken in 2012, January 24th, 2012 to be exact, and as I just mentioned, is a composite of highly detailed photos. Now, learning that the photo on the left is not from 1978 and is in fact only from a decade ago might at first cause even more alarm as you compare the difference between the two photos. 40 years is one thing, but that much difference in a decade? That's seriously bad. Unbelievably bad. And that's probably why they lied about the date. Nobody would believe that much change could happen in 10 years. So what's the deal? Why is there such a huge difference between these two photos? Well, it turns out there's more to this story. Once again, this image is actually a collection of photos stitched together. The difference being the amount of time afforded to take the pictures. The photos used in this image were taken between the months of June and September of 2001. That's four months of photography. Four very specific months. Which brings me to my next claim. Claim number three. The Earth has lost a lot of vegetation over the years between these photos. Looking at these pictures, the most notable thing, other than the gigantic United States, is how brown the image on the right looks. Sure, there is less blue due to the prominence of the landmass, but there is also much less vegetation. It looks as though deforestation has taken a huge toll on our planet. And in reality, it has. Deforestation is a huge problem. But this much? Not really. Remember what time of year I said the image on the left was taken? Over the course of four months between June and September. And the image on the right? One day, January 24th. So one composition of photos was taken during the summer, a time when this section of the Earth is bombarded with energy from the sun, plants are in full bloom, and there is generally a lot of green in the northern hemisphere. The photo on the right was taken in the dead of winter, when our part of the Earth is tilted its furthest from the sun, allowing less light, lower temperatures, shorter days, and the mass hibernation of virtually every species of plant life in the region. This difference in seasons, coupled with the relative size of landmass, accounts for most of the alarming differences between the two photos. Claim number four. These are unaltered images of the Earth. It's never stated explicitly, but it is implied that these photos are unaltered. And while it's somewhat cliche to exclaim photoshopped every time you see an image on the internet, in this case, there seems to be at least a little trickery going on. First, let's examine the 2012 photo from the right-hand side of this image. When we compare the version of the viral image to the photo as it appears on NASA's website, we see some slight variations in color. Nothing major. The images look more or less the same. And depending on a number of variables, including how well calibrated your monitor is, how YouTube compresses this video, and which quality setting you're watching it in, you may not see any differences at all. In fact, you could chalk up these color variations to crappy JPEG compression, crappy software, any number of unintentional, maybe even automatic losses of quality. My point is, I don't think this image was intentionally doctored. This image, however, looks oversaturated and more vibrant. In the original image, the oceans look more purple and the land less green. Somebody took this image of the blue marble and tweaked it to look more blue and more green than the original. Overall, the Photoshop version looks more colorful and to be honest, fake. Technically, I guess they're both fake, seeing as they're composite images made up of thousands of photos. As a side note, the original blue marble I talked about before was taken as one single image in 1972 aboard the Apollo 17 mission, the last mission to the moon or beyond that any human has ever taken. So this image is the most recent true photo of the Earth we have. To get a true comparison, we would need to go back to the moon and take another photo like Earthrise, only then can we see how much the Earth has visibly changed since 1972, if at all. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like anybody in Washington has any interest in space travel beyond near-Earth orbit, at least not within the foreseeable future. Now, I'm not saying we aren't negatively affecting our planet, I'm not arguing in opposition to climate change or pollution, nor am I trying to dissuade anyone from drawing attention to environmental issues. How we treat this planet is very important, but how we talk about that issue is also important, and spreading misinformation is not the way to go about it. So there you have it. 
Both photos are inaccurate representations of our planet. The land masses are out of scale with reality and with each other. The photos are taken at two seasonal extremes of the year. And on top of that, the photos have been doctored to support the political agenda of its creator. So the next time you see this picture, instead of clicking reshare and spreading false information even further, maybe just ignore it. Or better yet, share it with a link to this video so people who have already fallen for it can see the truth. If you enjoyed this debunking a mythical meme, please like, comment, and subscribe. I got a lot of new videos coming up very soon. Also be sure to check out the last video I made, which was six odd things about Ghostbusters. Maybe I'll put a link right here so you can click on that. Be cool. Anyway, if you know another piece of misinformation that's been going across the internet, leave a comment below and maybe I'll do a video on it. Until then, keep being awesome.